So here we are gonna finish this series off in the last few turns, but I do have a surprise for you guys at the end of this video. So, so far we just had the end of the coalition war against Elizabeth, and that's all that's happened so far. Uh, so let's, let's look over some of the nations, I guess, as we continue to tick on through the last a uh, few turns of this game and look around. Well, I guess Japan is finally starting to attack this coastal city of China. You know, they really never got the opportunity of, of, of uh, I don't know, they they had the opportunity, I guess. I shouldn't say that they didn't have the opportunity. They did because Japan has always had a pretty good navy, especially compared to China. China never had anyone really protecting their, their coastal city here, but they never engaged. And, and actually, I'm saddened, but that Genghis Khan in turn didn't declare war and, and go after the Japanese mainland. He stayed completely away from that sort of scenario. And that, it, was, it was weird to see that also because I'm wondering if he was ever able to, give, to get the opportunity uh, of getting outside and, and having the freedom of the Pacific Ocean in their, in their hands, I guess you could say. I wonder if they would have declared war on, on the Shoshone. They did border some nations. They did border uh, Seattle and Atlanta, the former cities of Washington, but they never declared war. And and I know the tensions had built up. I mean, you know, uh, Pagatello still has two atomic bombs just sitting here inside of Seattle. I I'm sure that there was a Cold War brewing. There probably was. Uh, you know, Mongolia, I guess, had access to a few. They could have brought... They, they, they did have technically some access to the Pacific Ocean. But the problem was that Tonga, these Polynesian cities that they stole away a few videos ago, weren't that great in production. They weren't in very good spots. So all their really good production cities were hidden and, and they were kind of trapped behind the Japanese borders. So that was the problem. And I don't think they ever got open borders through China or Japan for the last, like, thousands of years. They I, don't, I didn't see it. I, I don't think I recall ever seeing that. So... It's too bad that, that, you know, Japan never really launched an attack on Asia. I thought that would be the campaign. They did control Nottingham. Well, they do control Nottingham now. They just now controlled it. Uh, but they really can't do much with this this region of the map. There isn't really much going on here. Um, you know, Mongolia kind of falls into the kind of the storyline of these big, massive civs that didn't do anything. Uh, Mongolia, and I think that's because of the Prince difficulty. Again, and I've discussed this, you know, throughout this entire campaign now, it was... It was good and bad. I liked Prince Difficulty because, again, they didn't completely snowball. And that's that's what I didn't... I, I hated that, a part of Deity. I hated the snowball effect that we saw from the Zulu and the Mongolians. Um, that did not happen in this scenario, and it really let a lot of other civs get the opportunity of making a comeback. For instance, William probably would have never, ever had the opportunity of grabbing all of these cities so late in the game if it was on Deity. Because at this point, you know, remember the Huns are a part of the big four, uh, I guess the big four of this nation, and, and Helsinki is actually about to fall again to Siam. The Huns are a part of the big four that, you know, were kind of completely, kind of continued to stall out throughout the game. They, they more than likely would have launched their attack through Scandinavia. They, I, I imagine that if they are playing on Deity, they would have grabbed Orleans a lot sooner, which have which would have given them opportunity to take out Harold, and then they would have moved through Sweden, which would have been kind of cool, actually, because they would have had to fight two fronts uh, against the, e the Eastern Swedish Empire, and, and actually they lost a significant amount of power. Um, Sweden did, at least. Oh, they might, they might survive here. No, there's no way. Now with this artillery unit, uh, Helsinki will fall as soon as Siam's turn comes up. But yeah, no, Mongolia was one of those civs that, didn't, that, that definitely stalled out. Uh, they had an opportunity of going after Siam and China, but they just didn't. They, they just they couldn't get anything going. Indonesia has got to be, I would say, if I was going to give an award to the most, I, I don't, how should I put this? The most uneventful sieve, it's got to be Indonesia. Jeez, just didn't do zero. Zero. He declared a, four, a few wars, I will say that. No one I think he was bordering against, though. He didn't, he didn't declare any wars against uh, anyone he was bordering, bordering with. I believe he... I believe Mongolia declared war on Indonesia or vice versa at, at one point there. That was probably the closest war that, that ever got to him. Maybe Korea and Indonesia. I don't know. But, uh, geez, if there is an award that I was giving out to the civs for most uneventful, I've got to say the, the entire Indonesian campaign, nothing happened. Just, just nothing. It was crazy. Um... Krios managed to survive, and again, I whoa, I don't even... Did we talk about this? I don't think we talked about the Shoshone City in Australia, and that's what happens, really, when uh, when you don't settle northern Australia. Uh, we saw that with Korea. I mean, they, they had three cities in this region, two in Australia, and then Polynesia grabbed something, and then now the Shoshone have grabbed something. Uh, yep, and that's what I thought. Helsinki has once again fallen to uh, the Siamese control. 
So yeah, no, Indonesia didn't do anything. Polynesia is also a big disappointment. You know, I thought that Polynesia, I mean, besides the fact that Honolulu had the most amount of citizens, that was really cool. I will say that was pretty awesome to see because again, I, I don't really know how. Um, they don't have that much food. So I don't, it's confusing to me. It's very confusing. I still don't know how the science behind this works. Technically, how did the game's mathematics equal out 36 population in Honolulu? How is this the biggest city? There's not much, that much yield here. I mean, yeah, the five, five food, four food, three food, that, that adds up, but that's not, that's still not that much. I can, st I barely get my own nation above like 22 population. So I, I just, I, I'm not sure exactly how, uh, how the Dragon Ball Z <laughs> leader of Polynesia managed to do it. Kamehameha. So I don't, I don't know, but still, I, I did, I did really enjoy that aspect that, uh, Polynesia was so massive with Honolulu and they stayed safe. They did manage to kind of keep themselves safe from the Shoshone, and I'm surprised about that because I, I thought that they were just going to roll. I mean, they, they still, at any point, the Shoshone could just roll into Honolulu and grab that massive city for themselves. Um, surprised that Maya, the, the Mayan, have stayed alive for so long. That was uh, pretty impressive, I will say. Uh, again, this this held such a huge importance to the New World civs, to the Native Americans, uh, and I guess Brazil, because they are the only only colonial nation that survived. As we know, the U.S. got destroyed pretty early on. Well, not early on, but by the middle of the game, they were destroyed. Uh, but yeah, no, this was this this could have held. This could have really given a significant amount of power to either the Inca or the Shoshone. This would have been huge if it was if it went to the Shoshone side, because that means that they could have quickly um, reinforced their navies from either the Atlantic Ocean or the Pacific Ocean and put them just at one front. Uh, imagine the Shoshone being able to use this kind of Pan Panama Canal city to attack the Incan, to the, the Incan cities a while back, these Incan coastal cities. That would have been such a huge event there, um, and, and he could have done a lot with that sort of scenario. But no one declared war in the Mayan, and, and he was too preoccupied with just kind of skipping over over this nation. And I'm not sure if he wanted to take the diplomatic impact of destroying this Panama Canal City, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know really what the AI's reasoning for, for that was, but they could have, I don't know, they could have done a lot with that there. Uh, still, I mean, a big focus that I really want to find out is what's what would have happened with the Zulu and the Shoshone. Uh, I... I imagine some interesting stuff because I know that Shaka has control of some atomic bombs. Uh, also, we are seeing a big battle here. I did forget about this. Uh, the Zulu are at war with the with William, and and he just now started to engage, I believe. Now there's a big ass Shoshone fleet though in the Atlantic Ocean, so I don't know what's going to come from that either. Uh, again, to summarize some of the events, uh, Manhattan Project has been built by Sunghai. Wow, that's pretty impressive for him. And he's now, remember, he's still at war with the Huns, so that's still happening here. Uh, the Huns have, Suns have, they, they've got a few Air Force units, some, a few aircraft located in their northern African colonies, but still not, nothing that much, nothing too crazy. Upcoming session, and Bismarck is plotting against Nebuchadnezzar, and we have Pocatello plotting against China. Uh, as we move on through the other nations, India really never was able to, uh, ooh, the Shoshone just peaced out with William. So that means that Zulu, I think Zulu is still at war. Um, and I think, you know, they haven't got an opportunity. It, unless, of course, this, these submarines, are, are they? I can't remember. Are the Zulu at war with William? I, I, I don't know. But if they get, all they need is these submarines to reinforce Paris. And they'd be able to wipe out most of these Zulu ships, I think. Those, those submarines are always pretty OP. Um, again, again, Helsinki has gone back. Helsinki was probably, I think, top three biggest cities in the world. And now... It has ended to one. It's just been a complete massacre of a lot of the world's population. This was a hugely populated city in this world, and it's gone down to just one citizen. Pretty sad day, I would say, for Helsinki and most of the world. Um, overall, it's been a pretty eventful world. I'd say a lot of wars happened. It wasn't at all peaceful. Um, in terms of India, you know, like I said, they just never really got off to a good enough start, and the only way they could really expand was towards the Middle East. And I was surprised to say that this was also a big disappointment in the region. I, I, I really thought that, you know, there'd be some massive things going on. In, oh, Indonesia grabbed themselves the, uh, the atomic bomb by 2073. Um, very uneventful. Not having one sieve come out on top here between India, Assyria, Persia, and Babylon. Who would have thought that? 
There was Arabia here, too. I mean, even Arabia didn't do anything. They got declared war on by the Zulu last minute, and then boom, they were just gone. So the Middle East was, unfortunately, it was probably one of my most excited for region. I really thought that this region would be interesting, and I thought that the Assyrians would do more against the Huns, and they did. Don't get me wrong. The Assyrians did a lot against Attila, but, I mean, they didn't take any cities. They distracted them a few times, though, and boom, once again, Helsinki falls back to the Siamese territory, uh, and, and I think that was the last Swedish unit that's been destroyed, so more than likely that will not exchange hands again. Uh, Greece has denounced Portugal, and the Celts have denounced England. There's a few civs that managed to stay alive with just one city, which is pretty amazing. Um, uh, oh, there we go. Oh, but they, they, they don't touch, do they? They technically do, but they're, they, no. Babylon's just, you can't, you can't take it over. You can't take over Babylon. There's a few cities that I do remember you can't take over. Babylon was one of them only because they're lucky to, enough to have these mountains, uh, this river. They also, we also have the Mongolian city. That's the Mongolian capital. That's almost impossible to take. There was huge attacks launched against Genghis Khan in the very beginning of this campaign, but nobody was able to do it. Finally, that war broke out, but that's just the Zulu and, and, and Brazil. Uh, unless we see more happen there. So yeah, the Zulu are still in fact at war with William. William might lose Paris here. That's actually going to be pretty close. Uh, the Zulu are still at war with the Netherlands, but they're not reinforcing with the submarine. They might let Paris fall. Uh, well, do they have a destroyer nearby? They don't. They Well, they technically have some destroyers near the Ireland city that they grabbed a hold of. Uh, Bez Bismarck and Sweden have peaced out. Germany had a completely different game. Germany had one of those games where it was just up and down, where... They were constantly kind of in that top five spot, I think, for most of our, for most of us. Ooh, Paris is so close. They're going to start to mobilize their destroyers now, I'm assuming. Oh, man, William, you better peace out soon or else this is not going to go well. And also, this is big because it is technically turn 548. Technically 548. He's got to keep a hold of Paris, which he will, I think, keep a hold of Paris for one more turn. He will technically... Now, that makes things more complicated because at the end of the day, William would have still won no matter how many cities he would have lost. He could lose Paris, Madrid. He could lose his damn capital. Well, actually, he can't lose his capital. As long as he doesn't lose his capital, that would be... that would be Actually, you know, he can because he's only getting two delegates, I believe, uh, two extra votes in the World Congress from the Forbidden Palace. He still would, would end up leading the World Congress, continuing to host it. As long as he didn't lose that hosting spot, um, he would have ended up winning the game. So it's it's kind of interesting to see how, that's, how that kind of plays out. Um, yeah, that is uh, kind of... Yeah, I, I don't know. I, we'll have to see. We'll have to see if he... I'm sure he's going to keep a hold of Paris, I think, for one more turn. Uh, but like I said, Germany had a very up-and-down game. Ultimately, kind of... I don't know. Exciting. I will say that. Very exciting. Never declared war on William, though. He had the opportunity of taking out William, but he didn't. And I think this is the ultimate... You know, the ultimate thing that this story comes down to. I think the ultimate story, I guess, this series comes down to, uh, comes down to as I should say, is the non-war, the non-aggression between William and Bismarck. There was never any aggression. No wars, and that really could have shifted the tide. Uh, that really could have shifted the tide heavily. It looks like they managed to destroy at least one city. Uh, where did those submarines go? I'm sorry, one battleship. Where did those submarines go that William controlled? He better engage. This might be bad. Um, and, oh, there is another one between Brazil and the Inca. That was always a very exciting war. But yeah, no, this, that, that's probably what the ultimate campaign comes down to. The, the campaign comes down to William and Germany continuing to stay at peace, or William and, and Bismarck. The leaders never decided to engage with anybody. Paris has stayed alive. Technically, I have got to end it. Uh, technically, that is, I'm going to have to, I will take the, the numbers of the campaign now at 550, because that's, that's kind of what we all agreed, uh, agreed upon, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, whether Paris falls or not, I mean, ultimately, Paris isn't providing William with a lot of of the Infoatics leads that he already had. Paris wasn't really much of that at all. He could probably lose the city and still be fine either way. But but either way, it, it is 550. Uh, he didn't lose these, these cities. He kept all five of these cities. And uh, this is where I'm going to have to kind of start the Infoatics votes and victory. I don't think it's going to change much. I think we... Uh, 
I think we all still can assume who ultimately uh, is is leading, and I I think that more than likely it will probably probably fall that way depending on. It depends. I haven't I haven't checked the infoatics either in a while. China, there's some still some numbers going on. Byzantium's got to be pretty disappointing one, but at the same time, very 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 exciting. I loved Byzantium in this game. Uh, it's unfortunate they never really mobilized against Alexander. Uh, they they really could have. Rome was doing almost the best in Europe. I thought Rome was going to be that successful, very, very successful European nation. But at the end of the day, Songhai just pushed back. They pushed back hard. And, uh, and Songhai was not having these European powers in, in Africa. That's what, I mean, ASCII's big thing was taking away nations from Europe. I'm sorry, cities from Europe. He took away that colony, finally, from William that had stood the, t the test of time for like a thousand years, and they took away the city up here, up north, near, that I think Rome controlled. Fez, at some point, Rome controlled Fez. At some point. I don't think they originally started with that city. Yeah, I think that was, uh, I think that was Morocco. So, we have one category already given away to us. William has 19 wonders in his control. Pocatello has nine, though. Pretty good for him. Bismarck only has four, and that's... Pretty interesting. So it is turn 550, and uh, let's go ahead and check out what I have planned for you guys. And boom, there it is. I went ahead and skipped forward by turn 604, so I know there are a few of you guys that wanted me to go to six, uh, 600. Uh, you might be wondering, why did, why did I go to 604? Well, I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later, but I definitely wanted to skip ahead and show you guys what the world looked like uh, by 600, because I know a few, of you a few of you wanted me to go to 600, so I figured I'd show you that rather than, you know, this 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 took a very very long time for these turns of process now it's incredibly long and we 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 cannot go uh, anymore but uh, at the end of the day you'd be surprised at the changes uh, not so much has really happened on East Asia uh, it seems to be about the same the Shoshone seem to be doing that now the only thing that there there's one big change that happened and that's boom here I I don't know how but. I wasn't paying attention. I just had this on in the ba in the background for a few hours, and uh, a few nukes a few nukes have been exchanged, and Pagatello now controls uh, the eastern this eastern coastal city that China formerly uh, owned under their empire. Uh, you know, if they land a few un units here, they might even be able to take even more uh, cities, maybe like Shanghai, Shanghai or Beijing. Uh, maybe going after Siam at some point, but uh, that was that was probably the one of the big shockers there. Uh, everything else seems to be the same in Australia and South in the South Pacific. Uh, we also have, but we do have the Aztecs managing to also get over towards uh, Australia. Nothing, nothing else though. I mean, Korea stayed pretty quiet. The Shoshone continuing to keep hold of their city, uh, and and Korea is doing okay. Polynesia is still around with Honolulu at 37 population. Everything is going normal. No, there's no war that that occurred between Pocatello and Shaka. I figured there would be, but there wasn't. They, I think they're too, they're both too strong to go at war with each other. Uh, the Mayans have somehow stayed alive, and the Aztecs are doing pretty good for themselves. Except Brazil is not. Brazil is stuck here in Salzburg. They're the former Austrian capital. That are yeah, they, it was an Austrian capital at one point when Austria was stuck with just this city in South America. But now it's the only city, and now it's the new Brazilian capital. Uh, more than likely, I'm assuming that Salzburg would have been taken, and the Brazilians would have been out of this game. Pretty strange to see, like. Some of these like pretty average to above average civs be eliminated before you know nations that have been around with only one city for much longer. It's weird that the Mayans and the Aztecs have stayed alive, uh, whereas the Brazilians just boom. Same thing with the Iroquois, just boom, gone. That's just you know one of the cool things about these AI only campaigns is that you never know what's going to happen. You really never know what could happen at any point. Anyone could just fall. Uh, same thing with Africa. I mean, Africa has been. Pretty similar. I mean, Egypt still is around, which is really impressive since they're right uh, bordering the Zulu to the south. There's lots of weird fleets going on all over the place: the Indian Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Pacific. I mean, it's it's pretty insane. The uh, the fleets, everything's pretty normal in India. A lot of people have the uh, a lot of people have the Manhattan Project built. Assyria is doing just fine. Siam just holds holds Helsinki, but they haven't grabbed anything else. But they have been, as you can see, there's there's a few citadels that have been plopped down and uh, making the borders look a little bit more interesting. Babylon and Persia still have these colonies over here. Mongolia hasn't decided to give them a hard time on that. Okay, so let's get down to the nitty gritty and uh, show exactly why I wanted to do this. I wanted to do this because at the end of the day, I wanted to see what was going to happen to Amsterdam and what was going to happen to William. 
uh, because there was this lingering feeling in my head that I figured, well, maybe I should name two winners. I should name whoever wins the Info Addicts, and then I should name William. And I thought that because I thought William would eventually win the game. Maybe. So that's why, you know, not only for, you know, your guys' like, uh, opinion of, of skipping ahead, but I also wanted just to see what would happen to William. And at this point, it's it's just it's taking it's just taking way too long. I, I can't process the turns anymore. Uh, it's it's been going on for uh, several, I think, two or three hours. And uh, well, for one, he, here's the evidence that we have. Uh, we know that Shaka has been at war with William for over, I think, sixty five turns. Maybe not six. I think it's about no fifty. Maybe fifty. About 60, maybe at 58, 59. Uh, Shaka has, he has yet to declare, or has yet to make peace. He has continued to try to grab cities. I've been watching this progress because this, obviously, to me, was the most important part. I really wanted to find out what was happening. Shaka has not stopped. And at the end of the day, it. At the end of the day, I do not think in my this is my personal opinion, and this is kind of where I I like I like how we're gonna end this series because it's gonna be controversial, and you guys can leave your thoughts in the comment section below what you think would have happened. Um, more than likely, Shaka would not have taken Amsterdam with this force that he had here. Uh, he had a few more, but you know William has been able to defend himself uh, defend himself somewhat here, and it's gonna be up for debate. And and honestly, if if you ask me my opinion, there is absolutely no way that I think that Amsterdam stays in control of William for the next, you know, I think when he has about another 100 turns before he can win. There is no way because it, it happens every 20, every 20 turns. There's a vote in the World Congress and William gets two extra votes. So you're looking at another. What is that? Uh, 100 turns, right? Another 100, maybe 120 because he'd be at 34. Then he'd have to go another 20 uh, for the 36 because he needs 35 to win. There is no way in, in my head, and I don't know when it would happen. I don't know if it would happen in 10 turns uh, or 50 turns or even 100 turns. But come on, let, uh, let's be real. Eventually, Shaka, I think, would have taken Amsterdam, and that would have been a very complicated scenario. Then we would have been a stagnant. Uh, there would be a stagnation in the World Congress where Shaka would have picked up two votes from the um, Forbidden Palace, and then William would have gone down to two, would have gone down to 22. So there would have been a tie between Shaka and William. And honestly, there's just, there would be, it would just be too difficult to name one. And, uh, and honestly, I mean, I, I really did this for William just to see, you know, if William stayed alive, if he didn't lose Paris, I mean, even if he lost Paris, that's fine. If, if he just showed that he would have been okay, I mean, maybe pushing back against the Zulu would have been uh, a good way to show it. it just something. But maybe if the Zulu had had someone else declare war, maybe if if the Zulu the Zulu declared war on the Shoshone or something like that, if if something else happened, maybe I would have been able to side with William and, and name him as as maybe an alternative to the first place vote. But you know, I just can't honestly. I mean, I even gave him four more turns too. I just I cannot see William winning this game. Um, and I, I don't know when it would get taken, but I think that ultimately the capital would fall to Shaka, uh, leaving towards the stagnation, and, uh, and and who knows how long the game would go on after that. Uh, but that's that's something that I really like to end it. I, I love that we're going to kind of end it on this sort of controversial um, events. Obviously, you know, we're still going to name the, vi the winner uh, through Info Addicts and through... Uh, uh, through Info Addicts and, and, and by 550, so we're going to reload the save uh, and, and figure out by then, because that was just kind of the set time and, and the set uh, victory scenario that we all kind of voted upon, so that's what we're going to uh, that's what we're gonna do. I just wanted to show you guys exactly what it looks like by turn 604. Pretty much still the same. I'm glad that we didn't just continue on the series, because uh, really nothing would have happened. Uh, the most exciting thing would have been the Shoshone taking over the Chinese coastal city, but... Uh, yeah, anyways guys, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the final video where we find out, find out who won this game.